Good evening, guys. Hi, how are you doing? Let me see if Twitter space is working because uh, I, I see that I'm having the same problem that I had yesterday with the Spanish speaking uh, Twitter space. So I need to be sure uh, if, uh, if it's working. I made a test earlier on and uh, everything seemed okay. But let me see if I can add uh, Henry. And, uh, Hello, something. I'm here. Okay. Hi, Henry. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, so let's start it. Uh, okay. So one, two, and three. Hey, brothers and sisters from the StarkNet ecosystem. Welcome to the Star Cafe, your virtual uh, space cafe, where you'll enjoy some tasty virtual food and drinks while listening to some cool uh, StarkNet related content. I'm Nurstar, your personal uh, Stark barista, and I'll make sure to make you feel at home and well served with some specialty content. Today is a very special one, as we are going to speak with Henry from Starkware about the first StarkNet version that allows the deployment of smart contracts written in Cairo 1.0. It was launched yesterday on Testnet and it's coming on mainnet very soon. And then in the second part of the space, we we'll transition towards the Everquark NFT auction without something from ducks everywhere, and maybe with some cool guy from the Everay Ever team as well. However, let's serve uh, some good coffee to our first guest of the day, Henry, the StarkNet uh, dev, dev advocate, uh, advocate from Starkware. Hey, Henry, welcome. Hey, Northstar, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, I'd like to go straight to the point. Uh, I'd like to know what is new about this latest StarkNet version, the 0.11.0. Why is everybody on StarkNet talking about it? What's, what's its role on the overall development of the StarkNet scaling solution? Please. Um, cool. Well, well um, yeah, sure. So first of all, I want to say that I'm going to skim over what is in 0.11. But if you want a more extensive version, an exhaustive version of what is coming up with 0.11 on TestNet, uh, you should check out the documentation of StarkNet, docs.starknet.io. And in the StarkNet versions slash upcoming version, uh, upcoming StarkNet versions part, um, it mentions everything in detail that is in 0 0.11. Um, also want to mention that um, StarkNet 0 0.11 is on testnet, but for it to go to mainnet, uh, delegates will have to vote on it. Uh, which is an important process. At this, at this point, it's not guaranteed that 0 0.11 will go to mainnet. Um, and if you want to learn more about this process and get involved, we have a community call this afternoon to, to talk about this. Um, all right, so now wh what exactly is going on in 0 0.11? The main thing about 0 0.11 is um, that it, it's a turning point that will allow the network, StarkNet, to move to a newer surfer version of itself. Um, the main capacity that 0 0.11 is adding is the, uh, the possibility to have StarkNet smart contracts that fail that will eventually lead to have failed transactions on StarkNet. Um, if you've developed or used StarkNet in the past, you probably have had rejected transactions, meaning transactions that uh, were not possible to execute in StarkNet, and so they were rejected, meaning they were not included in a block, you didn't pay for them, they just were rejected. And while it's good to pay to not pay for rejected transaction, it's actually a big vulnerability for the for the network because it makes it possible for somebody to send a bunch of junk transactions and basically DDoS the network, which is not something we want. So we want to be able, when people send junk transactions, to turn these transactions into failed transactions, not rejected one. And so for that, we needed a new smart contract language. Um, which was different from Cairo Zero, which is what people were using up until now. And so that's why we came up with Cairo One. So Cairo One is a general purpose programming language, but it has a specific variant that allows you to write smart contracts for StarkNet. And these smart contracts can fail. So you will have the opportunity to have, I mean, you will have the, the possibility to have failed transactions. Now it's important to note that these failed transactions right now are not implemented. We know they will happen and Cairo One paves the way for that, but right now there is no concept of failed transactions. Your failed transactions will still show as rejected, but still we're paving the way for that. And so Cairo One comes with 
StarkNet 0.11. It's the first version of Cairo 1. Cairo 1 will keep on evolving. It will add features. It will, have functional it will add functionalities in the coming weeks. Um, but for now, that's what we... Um, that's what, that's what is available in, uh, in 0 0.11. I will also add that Cairo, 0 point, uh, Cairo 1 comes after seeing developers use Cairo 0 for almost two years now. So we've gained a lot of insight as to what developers like, what they don't like, um, and what makes their life easier. And so Cairo 1 comes with a lot of quality of life improvement of Cairo 0. In, in a nutshell, it's much, much more enjoyable to write. It's much, much more easy to uh, to maintain and so on so that's the main thing about Cairo 11 it opens the door to this transition from Cairo 0 to Cairo 1 um, so the first big thing is that Cairo 1 now you can deploy them on StarkNet the second thing is that it includes a new syscall in StarkNet meaning a new functionality in your smart contracts which is replace class hash replace class hash um, essentially allows you to write in your contracts native proxy functionalities. It's not exactly a proxy, but it basically lets your smart contract, if it desires so, and if you've programmed it to do so, update its own code natively. And this will allow devs to move their code from Cairo 0 to Cairo 1. So there's a bunch of other stuff that, uh, that come uh, actually in, uh, in 0 0.11. And again, if you're interested in, in these changes, you should check out the documentation, docs.starknet.io. These are the two main ones. These two are really the key feature that will trigger the launch of this period, which we call Regenesis, which is essentially a hard fork uh, that is happening in two times. First, we're adding these new features, and then in a few uh, months with new versions, we will remove the capacity for people to deploy Cairo Zero code and, and interact with it. Uh, but it's the start of this uh, period called Regenesis. And that's mostly, mostly what uh, 0 0.11 is about. Do you have any question? Was it clear? Well, it was perfectly clear. Thanks a lot for this uh, very interesting uh, explanation about uh, all these details from, the, from this uh, latest version uh, of StarkNet. And uh, I'd like to know, how is the transition uh, to mainnet um, uh, coming? Uh, what will uh, the process be? I mean, I saw that there, uh, there's been the, um, uh, the first governance vote has been launched, and it, it is about this, uh, this version. In fact, we also have uh, Devin Matt a bit among the guests here, and maybe I, I'll invite him later to, to comment on the, start, on the snapshot governance vote. And I'd like to know from you, Henry, uh, how is this transition towards the mainnet for, for this version? Well, to be honest, Devin is probably more qualified than I am to, to talk about that. He has a lot more details, so you should absolutely invite him to speak. Um, but roughly speaking, um, the Stark token, which will be used to pay for the fees in the network and to, um, uh, to deal with uh, leader election, uh, has been deployed a while back. And now voting power has been allocated. So part of the voting power has been allocated um, to delegates. Part has been, uh, so delegates are community members who basically said, yes, I'll represent you and uh, vote on important votes for StarkNet. And then part of it has also been ex uh, attributed to special committees like a Builders Committee, which are people that were designated by the foundation as reliable builders with a uh, a good eye for technical choices. So these people received voting power. And so a vote has been opened on Snapshot. Um, and uh, the vote is basically, do we want 0 0.11 to go to mainnet or not? And people will get to vote on this. And if the vote is successful, then 0 0.11 will go to mainnet. Uh, very good. Well understood. Thanks a lot, Henry. And, uh... Well, I think my um, my questions about uh, these latest versions uh, version uh, are over, and uh, I'd like to thank you for for your time, and uh, thanks a lot for for coming to the Star Cafe. I know you're very busy, so I, I'll uh, you you can leave the space, and uh, I'll continue with uh, with the coming guests. And my pleasure. Uh, thank you, Norsar. Uh, once again, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Henry. See you. Take care. Okay. So guys, let's see if I can manage to grant permission to speak to, to Devon Matt.
and uh, let's see if we can accept it. I'm having some uh, uh, technical problems uh, with Twitter. Uh, I don't know why I managed to invite uh, Henry to speak while uh, uh, I'm struggling uh, to grant permission to out something from DAX everywhere. Uh, anyway, here we have uh, Devon Matt. Hi, Devon. How are you doing? Hey, Nurse Star. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Sweet. What about you? Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Amazing. So, uh, Devon, thanks, thanks for coming. I I'd like to know, could you tell us a bit more about this uh, very important first vote in the StarkNet governance uh, process, please? Yeah, um, Ari, like, really did cover um, everything about about the first vote. Uh, right now, 0 0.11 is deployed on uh, Gorley test nets one and two. Um, and there's a six day voting period that's open on snapshot. Uh, and basically right now what's happening is community members are encouraged to test 0 0.11, deploy Cairo one contracts on testnet. Henri has a really good tutorial that he uh, uploaded on how to um, upload Cairo one contracts to testnet. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, yeah, in over six days, delegates will vote on whether the upgrade should go live on mainnet. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. This is the first StarkNet upgrade uh, that requires a governance vote and all future ones, uh, yeah, will be approved by governance before seeing mainnet. Uh, this is kind of, yeah, again, this is like the first vote we're doing. So there's a lot of like new stuff we're testing out about like how long we deploy on testnet. Um, yeah, and like really the process of upgrading. So yeah, just kind of seeing how things go live in production. And yeah, it's really exciting stuff. Very good. Thanks a lot, Devon Matt, for this explanation about the first uh, real governance uh, vote uh, on uh, on StarkNet after the, the test one that was carried out uh, last week. I'd like to remind uh, to all the StarkNet delegates uh, that this uh, vote uh, will last for six days. So you will be able to vote uh, uh, until uh, the next week, the 27th, if I remember well. So if you have not voted yet, make sure to add to the snapshot uh, uh, link that you can find uh, in the also in the um, uh, StarkNet community proposal about uh, the vote that was uh, submitted by by Devon Matt uh, uh, last week. So so guys, uh, um, do your duty. So carry out your voting duty as StarkNet delegate. Don't forget it. Also because uh, it's the first one, vote um, hopefully four. I think that there won't be many objections to, to vote for the four uh, uh, option. And uh, having said that, I'd like to thank uh, Devon Matt for, for coming and uh, for saying some words on the government, on the first governance vote uh, on StarkNet. Thanks a lot. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for the coffee. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Take care, man. Bye-bye. Okay, so guys, now uh, I'm, I want to see if I can manage to grant permission to speak to out something. Let's see. However, I see there is also Sylv that has the permission to speak. So uh, in case uh, out something won't make it, uh, uh, Sylv will, uh, will act on his behalf as well. <laughs> uh, anyway, le let's uh, welcome Sylvie. Hey, Sylvie, how are you doing? Hey, folks. Happy to be here for... Uh both the uh, V011 vote with Devon and the, uh, the, the launch of Docs Everywhere Season 2. Yeah, exactly. We are here looking forward to the ever quack drop. <laughs> would you like, uh, would you like to, to say something about this special uh, drop? Some, uh, some info that we don't know. What is this uh, auction about? How many NFTs uh, will be auctioned uh, and so on? Of course. So we're still waiting for uh, out something to uh, manage to connect. Uh, I think he's got some issues. So the um, the initial sale that we had run with out something were um, two hundred ducks that he had built himself. We sold all of them in a bulk auction um, on the Brig Construction website. And for the future, what we're doing is we are uh, authorizing out something to build uh, within his own sub collection within Brick. So he is completely, this was the goal of Brick, so that anyone is able to build their own collection in a very decentralized manner so that you don't really need to ask for approval to do this. So the way the auction is going to work is that it's going to be a single auction for a single NFT. 
Um, so it will be um, happening tomorrow um, on Mint Square and the sale is organized directly by OutSomething. This is not done on the Brick website. And for the foreseeable future, OutSomething will communicate more about the schedule for the, uh, the rest of the drops, uh, but he will be doing them on his own um, to the Mint Square platform. Uh, okay, so as far as I understood, this drop won't be in the Brick uh, website, right? So it will be on the uh, Ducks Everywhere website, if I understood right? Uh, it will be on the uh, Ducks Everywhere page on Mint okay. Square. Um, okay, I see, I see. Then I head to the page as well. And um, yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, are you are you planning uh, any other uh, drop, which is uh, a bit more related to Brick than the uh, than than the Ducks in the near future? Are you yes. working on something? Okay. Kira, uh, you've probably seen that we run uh, the Dope Force DAO run of votes to have a collab collection with us. Um, um, so the, the, the purpose would be to have about the same amounts of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Dope Force characters built out with bricks and sold through the Brick website. We're sharing the revenue between the, the Dope Force DAO um, and Brick. And the, uh, this is done like purely for your collection purposes. Uh, so they're um, let's say that at the moment they do not have any usage in the game, but this is something that could happen later down the future. So we're really, really um, excited about this collab. Very good. Uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, I also saw yeah the the collab with the uh, this collab that you were you were talking about, like the the characters uh, made of brick, right? Exactly. Uh, like, okay. Very. Yeah. They, they look very cool. Uh, looking forward to to seeing them and uh, to to their drop if they they they'll do something like that. And uh, uh, having said that, uh, guys, just give me a moment to look for the page uh, where the drop will happen. Okay. And uh, let's see if we manage to um, uh, to welcome uh, out something on board. But I think we uh, we won't manage it. However, uh, just give me a, a second. I will play some some cozy music here. And <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Sil Silva, do you know the mm -hmm. exactly the name of the page, uh, the the mean square like Because if I write ducks everywhere, I get the ducks everywhere dot stark domain, uh, and that's I, it. I, I don't think the I'm address is. Uh, I'm not sure where the address uh, will be, um, but out something will post the uh, exact yeah. address tomorrow on yeah. uh, on this on on his Twitter account. That that makes sense. Sorry, uh, I I'll, I'll have a look at uh, his pages. Okay, there's nothing posted yet. Okay, let's see. Let's play some music in the meanwhile. So Twitter space keeps pushing, uh, pushing uh, out something out of the space. So uh, let's see if you're listening to me out something. Could you post something about uh, uh, the the address where I can find uh, the drop? I think it misses one minute. We are almost on the hour. Could you provide me with something, please?
Okay, here we are uh, again, guys. The Dax Everywhere page has just posted uh, a post on the drop. So it says, uh, I, once, I once was a silly duck who got into a never glyph by mistake. Now I'm a duo duck zero, the most powerful duck you've ever seen. Then there's the link. So I, I suggest you to go to the Ducks Everywhere Twitter page and click on the link. So if I haven't, uh, if I have understood right, uh, it's only uh, and one NFT, and the auction is already kicking off. And uh, yeah, let me see. Let me admire this this duck. Pretty beautiful. So if you can see it, uh, it's like uh, uh, it's made out of uh, three colors, mainly black, purple, uh, and a kind of uh, yellow. I have to jump out of the call. Thank you very much for organizing this new stuff. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your time, uh, Silvi. Take care. Let's see if out something can speak. No. Uh, it's a uh, yeah. I think it's a technical problem that doesn't uh, allow to something to to join us. Uh, anyway, yeah. Let's see the the duck. The, it, it's pretty cool. I like it. And uh, we're all already having the first uh, beats. But for the time being, uh, they're they're pretty uh, low. We are we're around uh, five dollars. I'm sure uh, we'll uh, we'll get we'll go much higher than that. However, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for uh, for coming today to the Star Cafe. I apologize for the technical problems. I hope Twitter uh, will solve them uh, as soon as possible. And uh, having said that, thanks a lot. And see you on the next episode of the Star Cafe to enjoy a wonderful coffee together. Thanks a lot. And I wish you a wonderful uh, either morning or evening. And uh, take care, guys. Bye.